Self-Publishing Podcast, episode number 48. Welcome to the Self-Publishing Podcast, where if you want something done right, you got to do it yourself. And now, here are your hosts, the three whitest guys at podcasting, Johnny, Sean, and Dave. Hey, everyone, and welcome to the Self-Publishing Podcast, the podcast that's all about how to get your words out into the world without contending with agents, publishers, or the other gatekeepers in traditional publishing. I'm Johnny B. Truant, and I'm here with Sean Platt and David Wright, also known as the On Topic Show, the one where we actually <laughs> do talk about, and we talk like at nauseating length about what it is that we're going to talk about. Speaking of nauseating length, any of you not watching the YouTube stream really missed out on the great dances that uh, Sean does at the beginning of every <laughs> self-publishing podcast. They're fantastic. <laughs> Can't be as good as the Gangnam style one. <laughs> Nothing yeah, is that good. Nothing is. <laughs> uh, we haven't had a, a show in a while where we haven't been either panicked, but not not panicked, but you know what I mean, like all uh, worked up about the the changes in some the Amazon sky is falling! Or, or whatever. Did you guys listen to? Uh, I'll answer for Sean. No. Did you listen to the last <laughs> episode or think any more about it or anything like that? I don't think about anything, and the minute I'm done with it. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> wow. That goes to Your childbearing. <laughs> out of sight, out of mind. What I know I've said over it, there. Your wife's a lucky lady. <laughs> I just kidding. made that joke. <laughs> the The last episode was really, really, really good. No, yeah, I, I thought about it, but I, I really, I'm still in the same gray area that I don't know what the fuck to do. And Well, we're going to, Sean and I are going to test the waters a little bit. I mean, it's not, you guys have kind of done this too, but we've been talking about doing the the model where, like the Netflix model where we launch something big and, and like the whole season of a, of a thing and then we step backwards. You guys are doing that with Available Darkness where you then release the, the, the singles or the episodes, but you're releasing them. No, 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 you are. You're releasing them for 99 cents, aren't you? Yeah, Starting. and we're giving away for free, and I'm going to say right now that that free shit come to an end. Yeah, so what we're, what we're, what we're going to do for White Space, and I, I really, really like this, um, and I th this was, I don't know if we just came up with this on email. This, I think this is mostly Dave's idea, but it's fantastic. I'm sure it's a horrible one. Then. No, no, it's really good. <laughs> we're, we're starting, we're just basically starting at 99 cents, which I think really gives people an incentive to just go ahead and get the answers now. Because it, you know, it's right there. It's they're going to spend the same. Actually, they'll spend more because we should have an introductory. Dave, we should put it out for four ninety nine, not five ninety nine. So it's mm -hmm. actually a dollar cheaper anyway. Well, we did that with Available Darkness. R right, we did, but we also had free. So it was five dollars versus free. This is six dollars yeah. versus five dollars. So you know, and free really, has gotten us dick. Uh, yeah, we really are trimming the tribe on this, and I think it's the right thing to do. You know, I love. No, wait, no, wait a minute, wait a minute, because you guys, I just want to clarify that a little bit because I thought you guys were still a little sold on free. Is this part of what we've talked about recently with maybe the changes in the perception of free? No, no I, the way we did it free uh, this last time, where we gave it away the minute it was out free and every week, uh, it, it, if free is not getting more readers, yeah, and it's not motivating the readers who are reading it to review. I mean, we've got a few reviews, not many. Uh, then what the hell is the point? Yeah, because when, when, we, when we brainstormed this live, you guys had you were pretty excited about that. So you're saying you don't think the experiment's working? No, the excitement Here, has died. Yeah, no. Here's my problem <laughs> with it. I actually think that this is a really, really good um, model. If I people think, turned out in droves and reviewed the fuck out of it and yeah. told all their friends and it like went up the free list, then I would be so happy. But it did. Yeah, so. honestly, this is a case of of our our audience kind of letting us down. We have a you a fuckers. No, we have a contract with them. We're like, look, and we told them at the, at, at the start, look, we're going to try this. And now we're going to send them a different email before White Space that says, look, we tried, we gave it away for free. We generated nine reviews out of thousands of giveaways. That's not an acceptable ratio. Um, so there's two things. There, there's We didn't get the reviews that we wanted. Wait, you actually, also, you actually said that? I'm not on the CI list. No, no, but we will. Because oh, you mean with Available Darkness. Yeah, did you email your people and say you guys... We need to do better. Well, no. well, I'm not going to no. guilt trip the audience. I don't. Because well, here, feel bad. I, the reason I just I want to mention this is I I will I will I'm on Lexi Maxwell's list. I I joined her list, and she did a really oh, awesome. Oh, I saw that not this week, but last week, right? And it was it was like passive aggressive email. It was like 
look, I need the reviews. That's why I'm doing this. If you guys aren't going to review it, then fuck all y'all. Wait, I in have a really that. nice oh, way. Hold on. You want me to read it? Let's see if I can find it. You're, you only like that list because you like to be talked mean to by women. That's pretty much it, yeah. <laughs> and it's not, it's not even a spunky email either, like spunk with, with a capital. No, <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's a smart email. I mean, you can tell she was a marketer. You can tell. Um, she's just she ripping was. up the self-publishing podcast. Yeah, she's a copywriter. Wow. You have to have basic marketing skills to be an effective copywriter. Um, okay, so, so here she, she said, last week's freebie generated only two reviews, so I have to pull back this week. Delivering free smut each week is super expensive for me. One of the <laughs> biggest reasons I do it is to generate reviews. Two simply isn't enough. Hopefully, I'll get more reviews this week and can put a few additional titles out there for free next week. So it's pretty to the point, but... And I, then there were a few direct links you know, review this here. This is what needs reviews. Review this. Yeah, like and she them, put, right? yeah, she put the links directly to the pages, not to the books, but to the reviews. And I, I think that's smart. Was it to the reviews or was it to the button on the reviews page that you click that says create your own review? Um, it was to the create your own review page, I mm. think. Was the subject line, you ungrateful fucks, I hate you all? Um, no, <laughs> oh, okay. I don't remember the subject line. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't remember. But, um, but anyway, um, uh, yeah, I, I think, and I love all this experimentation stuff, which is, which is why I think um, I do love going to 99 cents and just saying, look, we tried this and, and, and maybe it'll motivate our audience to, to work a little harder to help us because we, I think if we had a bigger list, um, the free may have still worked because what we wanted is to push onto the top 100 free list. We didn't even come close. But, but, so. uh, but here's the thing about the top 100 free, because there's a few things we get out of free. You get reviews, you get word of mouth, um, you get lead gen for other titles, and you get placement on the free list. And so those are like different aims. And um, I've watched, so I did a promo recently. We did uh, Unicorn Western one a little while ago, and I did, uh, Fat, I, I went ahead and did Fat Vampire 4, in KDP Select, even though I wasn't sure. And the reason I did that, by the way, is because... But that was pretty miserable, right? It, yeah, it was... Well, it, it did okay, but it didn't drive sales at all, which made me think, oh, I'm just giving it to the people who already have it. Like, nobody hey, Garrett, new is learning. Garrett, will you tweet if it's cool if we talk about your numbers that you shared with us? Um, so, Six well, inches? <laughs> while we're waiting for that, um, I'll just... You're talking about mentioned that the other thing is the the placement on the list, and it did place. Like I don't remember, but it got under the first page of the top 100 horror, so a genre chart. But I think that that doesn't matter nearly as much as even it did a little while ago, because you no, should, but, you would expect it to catch fire once it's on the genre charts. No, the the genre charts have never mattered much for us. Only the top hundred. That yeah. that's a big. That's when it takes off. The first success we ever had in this game at all was Yesterday's Gone way back season one in November of 2011. And that was when we cracked the top 100 free. And it, it, it led to a lot of sales of the full season. Like that was a really good thing for us. And I, yes, it's absolutely dimmed. But if, if we had managed, if the CI list had managed to push each of our, yesterday, or our Available Darkness episodes up to that free list, the top 100, then I think I would have a very different opinion about how the free first episode works. See, here's what I think. I think, you know, I don't think the list is big enough. And I think a lot of people on the list, much to their credit, in which makes me happy, they, they actually bought the full season. So they weren't yeah. doing the free because they bought the full season. And it's not like we're going to ask them, okay, I know you bought the full season, but can you buy the free too just to pad which our numbers? I don't even think you can do. Oh, well, you can do it for the episodes. Yeah, yeah, you can, episode, but, yeah, but, yeah. but I wouldn't do that. Ask. That's an annoyance. Yeah, yeah it's, it's an annoyance. And I, I really I don't like asking the readers to, to feel obligated to us. I mean, they're reading our books. That's fucking awesome. Uh, we owe them. We're, they're giving us their time. So it's not fair for us to say, hey, you didn't do your job, blah, 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 blah. Uh, th there has to be some middle ground where you can find a nice way to say, to, to really get them to care enough, invested in your, you know, because the truth is, if, if we don't do well, we can't continue to write the books. Now, see, I, I disagree with you on that, Dave, and this is, this is the same way that I feel people are very reluctant about selling in general. Maybe Sean will agree with me on this, maybe not. Is, so I'll make the selling metaphor first, where people feel when they're selling, they're very reluctant to sell because they're like, well, this person is, is buying my stuff and I, don't, I, don't, I want to walk on glass because they're being my customer and the customer is always right and all that. 
but I feel that in any good sales transaction, you're, if you're selling good shit, like they're benefiting too, and everybody should win in that transaction, which means that they should be thanking you just as much as you're thanking them. Yeah, so, Dave's too timid. So with readership, I feel I'm. I maybe agree. This, maybe this makes me a cock. Like I, I'm sorry, but I feel like I'm not. I'm not going to thank you because you deign to read my book. Like you're doing me a favor. I think that hopefully, if you're reading my books, you enjoy it, and you're thanking me too because you enjoy reading the books. And so if if that's equal, if the the writing and the readership is an equal balance, then if I'm giving you something for free and you're not doing anything, then I feel, that feels out of whack to me again. Yeah, not only do I totally agree with you, I would take it a step further and say that if you are timid and you are apologetic and you're afraid to be direct with your audience, you're attracting the wrong audience. And that's, that's very dangerous because all of a sudden you have a list with a thousand people and you have a lot of the wrong people on it and it doesn't do what it's supposed to do. And I think that I think that's very dangerous. See, see, I uh, see. I'm a, I'm of the mindset, and yeah, I am Tim, and I've I've always been that way. Uh, the only time I'm not is when I'm forced not to be by you know when I was a newspaper reporter, I could never be Tim, and that was the death of my job. So I forced myself to not be. But you know, as a writer, uh, my natural instincts are for timidity and and to not put my to to not have an arrogance about it. Hey, you know, our shit's good. You should fucking, you know, love us and go review our shit and tell But you all don't your have friends. to be arrogant. It's about being direct. It's about being really direct. See, to, to me, it, to me it's like we just have to get them to care enough and to understand and realize, you know, how it is a mutually benefit beneficial thing. Uh maybe maybe my way of appealing to somebody's, you know, uh, not sympathies. I, I'm trying to think of the word. Maybe my way is not as di good as you know Johnny's in your way. The direct. Well, it's not direct. It's not, and it's not a matter. It's not a matter of good. I would guarantee you that um, maybe a slightly more direct, maybe not that email that Sean read from Lexi, but maybe a slightly more direct one would lose readership. But it would lose readership that you kind of didn't want on the list anyway. Right. You would lose and like free okay. readership. And the people who respect you respect you more. And that's that's the that's the key there. That's what. And really the people matters. that really like the stories, you know, won't be turned off by honesty. I don't think. Yeah, no. that's it. And, and and Dave, we come back to this a lot, a lot between us. Where where I love the eye roll, by the way. <laughs> well, it's, 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 dude, you know how much I love you. Man. I hate you. <laughs> but this shit, it's Why like. Can't you be more like Johnny? No, well, Johnny, well, let's take be it giving everywhere. too many ass. <laughs> okay, we'll get to that in a second. But in in the meantime. <laughs> It's like um, you, anytime that you just know it's the right thing to do, then you can feel confident that in, in your behavior. Like don't, don't apologize for yourself. It, follow your moral compass and do the right thing and then stand behind it with strength because you're not, you're not, you don't want to guilt trip your audience, but you, you, they make. No, I hate guilt trips so yes. much. But, you, but, it's, but it's not a guilt trip. You're framing it wrong. It's not a guilt trip. It's being direct with them. You're saying, look, I worked my ass off for six weeks to get this season done. This is what I need before I can start on the next season. Mm -hmm. it, it, you know, it's, it's a, because we're not, we're, we're not a nameless, faceless. Like maybe someday Collective Inkwell, and I actually do see this, someday Collective Inkwell will be a subscription thing where you pay four ninety five a month and you get all our content and it's delivered not from Amazon but from some other source. And I can see that model. And at that point, the rules change. Right now, the rules are we need to communicate with our list. And the more direct we are with them, the, the more we're going to be able to give to them and get. And I, and I, and I love that. I, I love that... Like I love our readers. I love the fan mail. I love reviews. I love I and love you are bet and I know from over and over again being that direct with my audience in several capacities that you will get emails that will they'll be like they're rah rah emails. They're like yeah fuck yeah you know yeah. I got an email for the last fat vampire. The guy said this is so awesome. The guy said uh, I've really been looking forward to this book, but I'm going to wait a few days because I want you to be paid. And that's the way some people will look. And even if they aren't like looking to pay, they'll at least get it. And they'll be like, look, you're a writer. The more you deserve to be paid, I'm getting enjoyment. I mean, look, $3 <laughs> for a book. I've had, I've had readers email us to say, I love your stuff, but it, I have to apologize. I am going to wait for it to be free. Because and I, I want, want that money. person to fuck off yes, my list. But Dave, don't you understand that there's a part of you that's nurturing that reader? <clears throat> what do you mean? Like a welfare thing? 
<laughs> well, kind of. You're, we're you're, not charities. That's yeah. the thing. We are not charities. We are working hard. We deserve to be paid. Now, if, if, that, person, if that person sent you an email that said, okay, um, I'm going to wait for it to be free, but I really appreciate that you guys wrote this, so I left a review, like, then that's fine. Right. But if they that don't person, do that. <laughs> and then I, would ne- I would never tell anybody, get the fuck off my list, but I would be straight with them. And if they're like, I'm not going to pay, this is the only way I'll read it, well, then I kind of don't care what they think. I don't care either because it's not it's not fair. Then then there's no equity in the relationship. I mean, you guys both know me. I'm as I feel like an abused woman. It's just like I love him though. No, he's the only one that will read my book. Okay, you guys both know me. I'm as generous as anybody. Probably either of you guys know. Like to a fault. Okay, but I also think that 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 kind of thing is bullshit. And and if you're saying, look. I spent six weeks on this, and you get to read it for free, and you don't have to. You don't have to do anything other than read it. And then that person sends you an email that says, "Just so you know, <laughs> I'm gonna fuck you in the ass every week." And it's okay to like. You'll like, never people, find another like me. I've had people. I've had people thank me for getting it free and not review it, and that's that's fine. It's not that I don't resent people who get it for free because we've been giving shit away for free, and that's fine. And that's that was the intention. What I resent is. The implication that it has to be free, or they're not being involved. They they aren't going to reciprocate. They just want you. Yeah, shit. yeah. It's it's wrong. So I, I I'm glad we're trying something different with white space. I wouldn't be surprised if for nevermore we tried something totally totally different. I think this time is all about experimentation, which is one of the reasons. Uh, so let me give the let me give the PS on this right because yeah. I think this is where you're going to go, Sean. Is we've talked about Sean and Dave's serial model. Where it's it's episodes and then it's a season and you could say well make it ninety nine cents make it free whatever but Sean and I quite separately as a lot of you know have a series called Unicorn Western that is they're books they're short books but they are books they're contained stories so far there are three um, as of two days from today like March twenty first we're hoping to have Unicorn Western four released which is the one with Rope Kings by the way. And it's also the one where the arc, the story arc, takes a significant deviation in my mind. Like, this is where it's, you really start to get the... Yeah, this thing. is Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. Uh, yeah. Well, I would argue Don't it's... Don't give that away uh, to me. I would argue it's the Goblet of Fire, because that's where the whole big thing starts. Anyway, so Stop. the point is, <laughs> we have decided that we will not be enrolling Unicorn Western 4 in Select. It will debut at 99 cents for four days in order to let our lists get it cheap, not free, cheap. Then if we get enough movement on that, then it will move us up a paid list, which is better. We're going to get much less exposure, but I'm okay with that because we want to start. It's better exposure. And I think that the people who've been reading it will appreciate getting it at a discount. So after those four days, we will raise it to $2.99. Then we're going to wait until we have the entire rest of the story arc done, books five through nine, and that's the end of the Unicorn Western project, the first part of it, although there's going to be other parts. And when we do that, we're going to release the, the entire bundle, the one through nine full saga, and then we will release in sort of, it's like a halfway Netflix model. We will release six, seven, or five, six, seven, eight, and nine probably every few weeks, and those will be the same basic deal, I assume. Not in select, 99 cents instead of free. I'm kind of done with free. Oh, I'm sorry, except for permanent free. Yeah, I, I, I'm not done with free yet. I will still experiment all over the place. But I love how um I, I love how many different opportunities there are to try. So we should we should talk about this for a bit. So, you know, you know, the the listeners have heard for a while that, you know, Johnny and I are cranking out a lot of copy, but there's not that much stuff out there. Like you guys are only seeing four unicorn westerns as of two days from now. But we've been developing for a while because we'll we're we're kind of stockpiling and we'll eventually you know, come out with a lot more, which gives us a totally different testing ground um, because we got CI testing ground and we've got this testing ground. And the really cool thing is this is for later this summer when the children's project I've been working on forever will also be a third testing ground. And, um, and that's all really, really exciting because whenever we learn something from one place, we can see where to apply it in the other, which by the way, guys, tell me what you think of this. And actually, you, uh, listeners too, if you want to leave a comment on the page, I'm I'm curious to see what everybody thinks because uh, Lexi's been on me for a little while now to kind of uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, to to do the same thing and kind of look over her 
basically she's very willing to let her entire catalog be toyed with and experimented with and <laughs> um god damn it you guys <laughs> and and i i'm intrigued by the idea because it's so um, it's so different. It's than... a different. Gra- you don't have your face to promote it. That, that's the thing about about Lexi is she's working under a pseudonym. It's all building from scratch. Right, which is why she needs help. But and, and yeah, and that's this is why we know so much about what's going on with her. Yeah. Can we just tell everyone that Lexi Maxwell is in fact Hillary Clinton? I, yes. Yes. Yeah. I think it's Garrett Robinson. <laughs> Oh shit! You. Oh, I'm, sh- I'm sorry. I wasn't supposed to reveal that, dude. <laughs> he, that's he actually has a possible. sexy voice. He does. But anyway, what were you saying about her catalog? <laughs> um, I need to deflect uh, so that Garrett's secret doesn't get out. Her yeah. deep catalog. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, I've seen them. Well, I haven't seen them together at the same time. Same it's just like Superman. Uh, anyway. Clark Kent wears glasses. <laughs> Superman doesn't wear glasses. I don't understand the problem. <laughs> so, um, yeah, and, and I have a few problems with it. A, um, I don't know it, how damaging it would be to deal with children's stuff and smut. But beyond that, <laughs> you know, so, um, I don't know. I don't know. Um, I don't know if the plate can afford it, but also I don't want to set a precedent that like we have time to help, help people other people. Yeah. Fuck them. Well, well, we do it with the show, but this is just, this is so different. And it's, I, I think there's a lot of case study stuff here that we can do and she does the heavy lifting so it's really just a matter of pointing and seeing what happens and i don't know i i'm i'm intrigued and she's relentless so i don't know what do you guys think it sounds like a horrible poster for a chick flick (laughs) (laughs) i'm intrigued and she was relentless this summer Starring I'm Sandra really, Bullock. <laughs> I'm really. I guess what I would say about this whole thing is, and I start. I've I've been nursing this feeling for a few weeks, and especially last week when we talked to Jim Kukral, is this feels, uh, not, like like Sean said, like I'm not done with free. I don't. I, I said that I'm done, but n- no, I'm just. Yeah. I'm if, shying you saw, back. if you saw another another complete, like if they came and like revitalized Select and and offered some kind of thing like front page placement or something whatever it was yeah, and no, you saw I, that it well no basically i'm saying if you saw that it worked okay this blow works, jobs you'd be right back on it right it's just a matter of you're you're seeing the diminishing returns and we're also seeing diminishing returns while training people not to buy and that's bullshit. and that that's what bothers me so what i was going to say is and by the way i still have a uh, uh, fat vampire still has a few more days before it's out of select at that point, I'm then going to put it on other sites, and I'm going to try and get the permanently free thing since that's the entrance to my funnel. So it's 99 cents now, which is as close as Amazon will let you get to permanently free. Um, so is Unicorn Western. Uh, which, by the way, Sean, they're not going to let us take that out. Um, uh, put it on other platforms because the one through three bundle, I don't know whether this is my mistake uh, or not, is it's in select. And so, and I tried to get it out. I was like, look, we've never used those days. We're not going to use those days. They're like, fuck you. you got to stay in now. Um, Too anyway, bad. Just put it up and make them boot your ass. Uh, well, I could if yeah. But anyway, what I was gonna say is this feels um, this feels right. Like every every time I think about this, I'm like I'm like okay, I'm writing stuff. I'm putting it out. We're discounting it for the initial people. We're we're actually charging them money. It's a sensible product funnel. It's not a gaming of the system or some sort no, of. No, and they're still opening their wallet. Their first encounter yes. with us is still opening their wallet, which you're you're you're. you're hey, training... that was my first encounter with my wife. No, <laughs> <laughs> you're training them from that first transaction that you're worth paying for instead of worth waiting for to get free. And that's that's what it is. It, and it, it is a different message <clears throat> for sure. It, it's a different group. It's a different because and and this I think what really really got me on this is that Fat Vampire Four when I released that I had a lot of emails saying, man, I can't wait. Where's Fat Vampire? People were emailing me. Where's Fat Vampire 4? I can't wait on Twitter. And then I was like announcing I was going to release it. And they're like, yes, yes, here it comes. It's awesome. And then my <laughs> reaction... Can you do that one more time? Yes, I'm yes, yes. i an animated <laughs> GIF. <laughs> my rea- and then my reaction... Dave's giddy today. <laughs> my reaction... No, you guys want to check out today's uh, Better Off Undead. No, Dave, nobody should cuckoo. ever check that out. Dude, he is cuckoo um, for Cocoa Puffs and that shit. <laughs> but my, my reaction then, all weekend. after getting all of this positive like anticipation was, okay, here it is free. And then I didn't get any movement or any other stuff, which meant that the people who were getting it were the people specifically who already knew about Bad Vampire, 
already had the other shit because I'd probably given it to him for free. And I made like, I don't know, 40 bucks total in book sales across all of my titles for that. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> hey, um, can I... Uh, do you, Should I mention my other thing with Fat Vampire that, Sean, you don't totally agree with? Oh, Just yeah, totally. sure. Okay, so what I did is I created... And I, these guys both hate it, but I'm going to modify it so I think only Sean <laughs> will hate it. Is I created... Because I'm, I'm moving Fat Vampire to be the, 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 the entrance to that funnel, meaning it's, it'll be permanently free... As soon as I have license to put it on Barnes and Noble and Kobo and iBooks and Smashwords, it'll be free there immediately, and then uh, hopefully if Amazon will price match. And so, in order to get that funnel of people, and hopefully the people who, like I said, I still have a promo left, a few days left for a Fat Vampire promo, if I get a surge on that, I want those people to have a logical buy up to a bundle. And my current bundle is books one through three, so I created a book two through four bundle, which I agree, in Dave's words, is, quote, awkward as fuck. <laughs> so da- so I say Dave- that about most things. <laughs> so Dave suggested... <laughs> so does your wife. It's the name of his diary. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so Dave suggested... I thought that was Mein comp. <laughs> Dave suggested adding book one, so it would actually be a book one through four bundle, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do that, but the idea was I wanted to have a $6 bundle, which is what the, the one through three is, is priced at, that's a logical follow-up for somebody who's read the book, first book, likes the first book, and doesn't feel like, well, shit, I already got the first one. Yeah, I don't hate the one through four. I, I think it makes sense, but I don't love it. Like, well, you I, don't love it because it's temporary. But the thing yeah. you got to understand about Fat Vampire is that, first of all, I started doing this four months ago. So I am four months into publishing, for real. And I'm not going to have that series done for <clears throat> six months or more so that's an eternity to me. Yeah. And so temporary that makes sense. to me is temporary in air quotes. Like Unicorn Western, I tried to sell Sean on this on this for Unicorn Western too because we're we're, we're writing that. But then, very good point. Like we're gonna have that done entirely in like a month. But Fat Vampire is gonna have four to six months, and so having that bundle as my second step feels okay to me. Would would it make sense for you? And I know that that I, man, I don't, clearly don't love this idea because it. it pauses our shit big time but would it make more sense for you to just finish fat vampire get those books written close that funnel out i want to no i want to honestly this is another interesting uh, split test because we'll see what anticipation plays in it oh yeah i I kind of like the idea of letting people marinate and wonder there's a hell of a cliffhanger at the end of four so I kind of want to see that but the other thing is that we move so much faster on our stuff that it's more important for me to build momentum yeah, the momentum's the best shit ever. It's crack. So do you want, before you... Um, to be clear, I've never actually tried crack, <laughs> so I don't know if it's as good yeah, as Yeah, right. <laughs> Everyone says that. No, he I doesn't do like crack. He likes uh, the pure shit. <laughs> I do have a few questions. Do you want Look to, at that uh, nose. Tell me that nose doesn't <laughs> use coke. <laughs> what do you want to run through some... Fuck? Okay, also I'm be, like way off. <laughs> also to be clear, I have never ever ever tried coke. Wow. The real thing. <laughs> Dave Dave uses coke all the time. He's over there with with his cracking one open and drinking it. <laughs> so do you want to listen to some some voicemails? There's just three. Sure. Here. And yeah, this will get us mostly idea. caught up. By the Derail way, there's like me. one or two people who um who called one in like very very recently? I haven't moved those. So these are this is clear in the decks. Now is there the first from one's Bathtub from, Girl. No, um, but there is one from Garrett. But my guess is, knowing Garrett, this is really obsolete now. <laughs> so, because wow. he, you know, he no, because he moves so fast. Like he this does. is probably a question he had forever ago. Remember, by the time we answered the question about images, he'd already had it in print for like six months. <laughs> All right, so here's this question. Hey guys, it's Garrett. Fucking Garrett. Um, what's... And you could tell this is a while ago because it's before he got his recording equipment. Too. He sounds drunk, <laughs> too. So Love last week's episode. It was really, really freaking good. That was good. episode uh, eight. Last week. Podcasting and everything. And it inspired me to start my own podcast. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> um, Long time ago. For this week, in terms of self-publishing, is what do you guys know or think or... How do you use the affiliates program, Amazon affiliates program? I am a part of the Amazon affiliates program, and the way that I'm currently using it is to put links of all my own books up on my own site, you know, through the affiliates program, 
we, but all that means is that if somebody buys it through my website, they get, I get like a little extra kickback, but it's tiny, like on the order of like a quarter per book or something. What do you guys think about a strategy to like encourage other people to um, to post a link on it, to post an affiliate link on their website? Um, if you were to let's say find some book blogs and say like, hey, if you put an affiliate link up on your, if you do a review and put an affiliate link up on your yeah. website, I'll send you the next free season. Or I don't know, like how would you guys go about it? Because I already had one guy leave me a blog book review and I was like, hey, you should post an affiliate link. And he, oh, that's great. Yeah. And he put it up so the image is on his site now and he gets a little extra income if somebody buys it through him. And as a thank you, I sent him my next book for free. So I don't know. Do you think that's a terrible idea? Are there other creative ways that you guys can think of using it, or would you not recommend using it for some reason? That's your question. Of service. Thanks, guys. Talk yeah. to you later. Yeah, I, oh, think it, I think it's a terrible idea. Space, God damn it. <laughs> Fine. Oh, and Fat Vampire. And thanks for calling oh, from a car record. phone in a tunnel. Finish your books. Faster. Faster. <laughs> okay, bye. Uh, I believe it's against the terms of service. And uh, also, when, when you sign up for the affiliate program, they actually want to know what websites you're putting the links on. They actually ask for that information. So I'm almost 100% comp confident you cannot do that. I, I also think it's a terrible idea. Uh, not, it's, I don't think it's a terrible idea in concept if it isn't a terms violation, uh, but it's not, I don't think it's going to work because anybody who does any affiliate marketing at all has ever done it. Amazon's is so fucking terrible. It's just, it's not worth your time. I, so if you, I mean, it's a commission of like, what, 6%? Yeah, I don't use affiliate Amazon affiliate links for anything ever at any point because I'd rather have the extra 10 seconds that it takes to hyperlink the shit. Like, really. We, we actually have it on some of our websites. Yeah. <laughs> I use it. I, I, I know I know Johnny likes to seed it everywhere. and <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it adds up. I make a couple hundred bucks a month. No, yeah, I. That's awesome. I don't. <laughs> but but I I'm talking. I'm not talking. Um, saying here's a book. Go get, like for other people using their affiliate link to one specific book. Like, it's just it's not enough. I mean, if 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 ten people buy a ten dollar volume, you're making what forty nine. Unless they buy other like stuff that? too while they're there. Yeah, the well, cookie lasts enough. for twenty four hours, but still. So if they're buying an iMac or something, then hey, you just got lucky. But that's probably yeah. Pretty but you're rare. really playing the numbers there, and yeah. I mean, for me, I just like I try to do things that are super, super time efficient. And I think affiliate stuff with Amazon is not time efficient. So I'd rather I'd rather spend my time just writing and editing and stuff like that. All right. So here's another question. This one I think is just a thanks. I don't think it's actually a question, but I got to play it because it praises us. Hi, this message is for Johnny, Sean, and Dave, and it is, of course, for the self-publishing podcast. I have been listening to your show for a very long time, and I'm actually up to eight episodes, well, kind of eight episodes back from the present uh, published podcast, up and right I now. wanted to say thank you all so much, um, and do not ridicule me on the air, <laughs> thank you all so much for... Um, the inspiration that you've given because since I started listening to your podcast, initially I was uh, waffling about writing a book and now I am almost done with the first in a series of books that I plan. Awesome. So thank you so much and I appreciate you all. Bye. You all except Dave. <laughs> I, I love that it's become def default that people think we're going to insult them. So. <laughs> Oops. No, we, not unless you call from your car phone as you're driving through a tunnel, Garrett. There's only a few people we insult, and it's mainly Garrett. It's mainly friends and enemies. I, I, I love getting those responses, though. I've gotten a lot of that. I mean, you, we've seen a lot through the contact for. I, I love that. Yeah, that's my favorite. That's why, that's why for me, this is, this is better than blogging. I feel like I do more in less time. I'm actually starting another podcast. I feel like Did Jesus. You know yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. What's your other podcast? I stepped all over that. Oh, I haven't. Well, it was just a by the way because it's not for this oh. audience. Oh, okay. But it's it's uh it's with Joel Runyon. Uh, it's like a human. It's like a human potential sort of. Thing. It's called Bigger, Better, Stronger, Faster. So, <laughs> Bigger, Better, Stronger, Fatter by Dave. No, well, what's funny is that the the, the, the Fat Vampire Four is called. Uh, see, I can't even keep him straight. 
Uh, fat, what is it? Harder, Better, Fatter, Stronger is the subtitle for Fat Vampire 4. And then I have this podcast called Bigger, Better, Stronger, Faster. So it Sounds like Fitter, Happier Radio. Wasn't wise. Um, anyway, so uh, one more question. This one's from Sergios. Come on. Hey, guys. Uh, this is for the self-publishing podcast. Uh, this is Sergios from Brooklyn. Maybe I mispronounced it. And I've got a question. I just want to say thank you before I ask for the always informative and always entertaining podcast. Um, He's listening I guess to something I've been else. writing my entire life, but only seriously for the past two years. Um, and I just have a question. Last year, I wrote my first screenplay, which I promptly just put into the drawer and decided that I just wanted to write novels. It was kind of more of an exercise. I'm writing my first novel now. I'm about 40,000 words into it, um, taking the advice that I heard on your show, really just trying to work you know, even with the full-time job, it's hard, but, you know, you make it happen, right? So my question is, now that I've I've already plotted and outlined a long time ago, I'm a bit into the second part, you know, I'm past the beginning, and I'm finding that already I've set up my characters, I've set up my scenes, the um, event has happened that is kind of dictating the theme of the book. I'm having a little bit of trouble determining the small nuances that happen in between characters. Like, for example, um, in this particular story that I'm writing, it's a thriller movie, it's a thriller story, and I have my lead hidden villain talking with what is soon to be his uh, adversary, and I'm kind of having a tough time really writing down, kind of like, a, you know, visualizing what their interactions are. Um, I see the dialogue, and I see, you know... I actually, my finger just slipped there a little bit. I did just pause it just to let you know this is pretty long. Do you just want me to keep going because we know it's about the interactions? It's like another minute. Go ahead. Yeah, I'm okay if you okay, keep Okay, I'll let it continue. So he just wants to know about the interactions between characters in this scene. So there we go. How these guys are hanging around, but what do you guys do when you want to really kind of get inside of a relationship um, with these characters? Like, you know, I can see plotting scenes. I can see plotting, you know, what happens and where the story goes, but it's it's this type of detail and I, I guess um, you know nuances that really ring true to, I think with good writing that I like to read and I know what these guys are in my head but I was just curious is there any type of uh, maybe thought process or um, development that you guys do I mean I know Johnny works by himself maybe Sean and Dave together how they do it um, you know what I'm saying like Sean and Dave do you guys ask each other like what are these guys saying to each other like how are they standing at each other you know like what is their posture? I know it, you don't write that in a book, but like this is you know in your head, and you want to deliver that feeling. So anyway, I know it's a long question. Um, appreciate all the help, guys. Um, really, having someone just give you straight advice, it's like you know, dude, just write, has been the best advice I've had so far. I think you know I'm terrible and good at the same time, which means that you know it's good progress. And I just wanted to thank you guys for it, and uh, hopefully I send you a link to uh, <laughs> my first Kindle novel when it gets put up later this year. So thank awesome. you. Um, have a great day. Um, thank you so much for the, the kind words. Um, now screw you! <laughs> no, I mean, <laughs> I, I, do you, you guys, you guys want to go first? I know, yeah, I know uh, exactly what I want to say. But. I, I, I tend to think in, in, in dialogue. Uh, a lot of times I'll think of like an entire scene, like how it starts. and it, th Think of like a television show. Like what, what scene really defines your character, defines relationship between the two characters? Uh, where are they? Are they like sitting across from each other in an office? Um, something where, where, where it's subtle. The actions are subtle, but the actions speak you know, volumes about what's being said. You don't have to really get into the mundane, like he sat down, he crossed his legs and stuff like that. Uh, allow the audience to do some of the work, filling in the blanks. Just put them in a room, set them up however you want to set them up. Uh, you don't have to throw a whole bunch of like in-between stuff. Only use it sparsely and, and, and use it like cleverly, like to kind of, um, you know, drop little hints, uh, like maybe somebody's not paying attention to what somebody's saying. And very subtle things that, speak what the dialogue isn't uh, speaking. Yeah, I, I agree with all of that. I think that um, that good dialogue scenes can... can that, that's why screenplays are, are more science. Um, they're more scientific than, I'd say, books because they have exact page counts. They have, there's, there's a lot of exactitude to them. But if, if you look at it, 
the economy of storytelling is fantastic because even a crappy screenplay still has a job to do. They have to deliver very specific amounts of information um, in a very specific amount of time. So if you look at the economy of dialogue in a film, it really moves the story along. And a lot of it is in the precision of the words used. Now, um, I, I think, and, and um, one of the ways I really like to write good dialogue scenes is by overwriting them and making them really long and then cutting a lot out because it's it's like and it's that it's that Tarantino quote that I love which you know they asked him how his dialogue is so strong and he said well I get my characters in a room and see what they're going to say and you know he'll write 50 pages to get five and um and that may be a little overdone and his characters are certainly verbose but I think the idea of just kind of getting your characters in the same place at the same time and letting them talk. Um, you know, it's like Hemingway is what 90, he said, um, I'm not that good a writer. I just know that, you know, my ratio is 90% shit to 10% genius and I'm never afraid to throw away the shit. So I think if you, you know, have a, a, a good dialogue scene, then just write it out, really get your characters talking and then don't be afraid to trim that back and really only keep the good stuff. Because if you write for four pages and you need two, then you're going to have some really good stuff. If you only need half a page, you're going to have great gems in there. The, uh, oh, Dave left again. <laughs> so uh, the, those are those are better suggestions than mine in terms of practicality because I was I have definite thoughts on this, but I don't know how to express them. So I, when I, um, I I'm I'm super anal about what the only thing I can describe it as is flow, and so when I get something back from Sean, I got to be a dick and get in there again and be like, oh, I want to do this. And maybe it makes me like, you know, I've, I've asked Sean about this. I'm like, is this making me an asshole? And so, but it, it's those things. I noticed I was doing this in a little bit of a polish Unicorn Western recently where it's an action scene and it's dialogue heavy, but it, there's something weird that occurs. And I think that this only comes from practice and from paying attention to maybe people in situations and movies and books is there's something where somebody will say something and then if you immediately go into another line of dialogue without something between those two, it feels rushed. And there's something about that, like a pacing of a scene, where I think that if you have a laid-back scene in a bar where guys are kind of talking and it's kind of tense, you need to build in that tenseness by throwing in really what are kind of a, th a few, I mean, they're really kind of throwaway lines. They aren't strictly necessary. Um, I've, a lot of times, and people may hate me for this too. People may think this is shit. I don't know, but this is the way I write is I will use things like, uh, I've used this several times, a moment passed. I mean, that says nothing, except that there was a beat of silence, and it just meters the scene a little bit more. And I go through a, a, a dialogue scene like that, where if they're speaking rapidly, I won't worry about that sort of thing at all. And if it's something where it's got to be measured and people have to be thinking, then I, I break it up in the writing without dude i'm so glad that you said that yes because i think that i'm cutting out your a moment pass oh well like but that. that doesn't mean i'm right about it yeah but but i think i am because we had this talk the other day about the the sly bar scene right that did take me a long time to do yeah i think i probably stripped some of that out but am i being a cock and saying that my way is better no because i don't care but <laughs> but I, but i tend to go clean you know i tend to um like I, I, I would think it's extraneous because I think the beat is understood as long as other language is there to say it. It's hard to know without looking at the copy, but, but I could see stripping that. The scene sure. that we're talking about is we have two. We have Clint and uh, another guy, and they're sort of sizing each other up. <laughs> and so to me... <laughs> Dude, you need a nap. <laughs> Go to bed. Um, there, what, to me, that means that there, it's like... Um, the, this isn't literally what happens, but it's like two guys circling each other in a in a typical Western where they're sort of like, huh, you know, trying to trying to get a bead on what this other person yeah, is. Yeah, it's about. totally that. Yeah. And so because of that, I don't want I want the scene to, to slow down. Now in a quick rapid fire thing, I will deliberately so like the scene that follows that, which I won't go into, had to have a totally different pace, and there were no moments that passed in that unless there was a lull in the action where it was like an ominous quiet. But I don't know how to describe how to do a lot of that. It just seems to come from... Well, and again, it's my yeah. opinion. It's my voice. It's not anyone else's. 
So apparently Sean's voice differed. Be like, what the hell? You're cutting shut out, and you're going to see it again when you read it. You'll be like, that asshole. <laughs> I do that, right I do that to Sean all the time. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> um, so uh, um, basically I think that there's no right way to do it. I think you have to figure out what works for you. And, and I think that um, the main thing is just getting it in your head and getting out there and not being afraid to rewrite. Because I think that's the common denominator you saw with all of our answers is that we write them and then we rewrite. And if the scene is holding you down, just put a placeholder in there um, and, and go back to it once you know more about the characters about or motivations. Characters. Yeah, and different so. writers are going to be different in their styles too. So I'm very dialogue heavy. I love dialogue scenes and it's probably to the point somebody in a review said that I'm explaining too much. So, um, and... And uh, I had somebody say that what I'm really doing is teaching, which is a weird thing to say about fiction. But there are lengthy scenes in my fiction where some character is explaining something to somebody else. But not everybody does that, and people, there are probably people that think that's stupid of me. But it's what I like to do, and it's what I think I do well. It's core literature, <laughs> you heathen. So I feel like I should have played the questions at the beginning because I'm realizing it's in the middle, and I don't even think you got to what you were going to say, Sean, and now we had this... Let's talk strategy. Let's pause and do voicemails. And I kind of out of flow. But did you ever finish that? Um, did you ever finish the, the 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 tease that you were talking about making with what we were doing? I don't think you got to that. Oh no! I mean, I I did tease that. I mean, we'll we'll talk a lot more about what we're doing um, in in a couple episodes. I think we have to um, get a couple more eyes dotted and T's crossed. But I am curious as to what you guys think about um, about kind of. Um, handling Lexi's catalog and seeing if I can shepherd her to some. Um, well, some you're almost sales. doing it anyway. I say it's not. Maybe this is just me being me, but I don't think anybody's gonna. You can compartmentalize that, right? He helps another creative person who happens to write about sex. Um, why that it's a problem, and you're not even using. Correct me if I'm wrong. You're not even using Sean Platt for the children's project. Um, no, it's a pen name for sure. Exact, and it's exactly that reason because I don't want children reading um, my children's stuff and then happening across Yesterday's Gone or White Space with revolvers at babies' heads and stuff. He's <laughs> writing his children's books under the name Adolf uh, Hitler. There it is again. The um, that 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 every did you read? Um, this is totally off. But did you read that everyday book, Sean? Did you ever read that? I did read that, and I love, love it. it. And, yeah, D Dave and I are talking about a, a, a way to um, write something that speaks to the same. We're talking emotions. about a way to rip it off. <laughs> yeah, um, we, we need a we need a um, something like a Z two kind of thing. <laughs> the, the reason that I mention that though has absolutely nothing to do with the story, other than that there's a scene where one character says to the other about a Judy Bloom novel called Forever. Which I'd never heard of. I never because heard I'm of not that a either. teenage girl. Oh, I did. Because <laughs> Dave, <laughs> love the timing. <laughs> love the timing. Oh. So I went. I looked at. I went and I looked it up. And Judy Bloom to me is like. Uh, again, I haven't read them, but I know just in pop culture, like Super Fudge, and those are like. Yeah, but she know. wrote "Are You There, God? It's Me, Margaret," which is like a. a, a very, um, I mean, I never read it, but from what I, I understand, did. <laughs> did you really? I read all the Judy Bloom books. Maybe it's just a case of she wrote a lot of stuff wow. and one thing happened to be more popular than the other, and it isn't her doing. But anyway, so Judy Bloom, the person who wrote Super Fudge, also wrote this book called Forever, which is, there are scenes in it, just scenes, not the whole thing, that are quite explicit. It was really. considered her porn book, and she got a lot of shit when that came out. Yeah, it was, and it, it is, Sean, because I went and I was like, how explicit is it? So I went and I looked it up, and there are scenes where the, um, the, the girl is reaching down and, you know, her hand gets wet, and it's, you know, like she's jerking him off. Wow. And there's a double penetration scene in there that is so <laughs> hot. Is there a gimp? <laughs> Maybe. There's two. Uh, so, okay. But that's a case of, uh, you know, but that's the same name. So you're 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 separating names. You're what you're doing is you're drawing the line in the sand, and if people figure it out, that's not your fucking fault. Okay. You're saying Who you're cares? even doing things. Dave, Dave, any thoughts on your end? On my this end, this isn't even the oh. same thing. You're not. You're you're talking about helping her out. You're helping. You're not writing the books. So. Yeah, but 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 I I think she. I think she wants a lot of a lot of creative input, and she deserves yeah. it. She, <laughs> well, she does, and she wants it. <laughs> she she wow. she works really really hard, and she um, 
I don't know. She's. I think. I think. I could see her. I could see her really taking off. But um. But she has her clothes. Of, Zing. <laughs> <laughs> she has a couple of things standing in her way, but they they are certainly. <laughs> Okay, Jesus fuck you. Christ, we're done with Dave. this conversation. I didn't realize that. I mean, we're normally fourteen, but it's like we're twelve today. Well, not not we. <laughs> I've not um, slept much in the past few days. <laughs> the um, but I, I, Sean, I don't think you really talked about the whole. Maybe you maybe you've talked as much as you want to talk about it. Let's just say that Sean and I have been having a lot of very strategic conversations recently. Um. Yeah. I. I think. Well. What, what, what Johnny and I are t- talking about will be really, really awesome, and the readers of, or the listeners of this show will love it in particular. Um, but I just, I want to I wanna dot a couple more I's before we, we talk about it, that's all. The, I think that what you should get out of all of this, even if you don't know all the details of all the little things that we're talking about, is that, um, and by the way, I think we're due to do some shows that are creative in scope too, because we've been talking. I would a lot love of that. Yeah, we've been talking really a lot of strategy, shit. and I think it's. I think this marketing stuff is important because I mean I've said this before, and it's it's a sad truth, but it is true. If you have two writers in the same room and they both, you know, um, they both start their career at the exact same time and they put their first book out on the same day and they follow the same production and publishing schedule. And one writer, writer A, is a much, much, much better writer than writer B. And, but writer B is a solid writer, but a much better marketer. Writer B is going to eclipse writer A very quickly with the amount of books that they sell and the amount of prosperity that they see and the amount of creative freedom that they have. And that's just a truism of indie publishing. You, you have to be a good enough writer to draw a crowd, but you have to be a good enough marketer to build that crowd and to expand it. And a hundred percent is dead. A hundred percent of well, okay, you there, know what? No, I, the art is crowded. That's the yeah, problem. Yeah, no, I, I will talk a little bit. I will say this about the project with Johnny. Um, one of the things that I really, really, really love about working with Johnny is that it's 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 we're we're both really into the formula, and um, and and I like that because I I really see parallels. You know, Dave and I. Are, are working off of the TV model. And it's not novels. We're not serializing novels. That's not what we're doing. We're, we are writing serials just like they do on TV, or at least our version of that. And, and they're intended as short nuggets on ebook. But I think that that model can be taken a step further. And you actually talk about page counts to word count to all of that. Because I don't think that TV isn't an art form. But TV fits in a formula. There is, you know, a sitcom is 22 minutes. Exactly. You know, I was watching, I was watching Friends the, <laughs> the other night um, with, with Cindy. And we were watching, a, um, we were watching a, a, a documentary about behind-the-scenes production, which I thought was really, really interesting. And, you know, they had this one episode. And it's one of my favorite episodes. It's the ones where, they, where Ross and Rachel get married in Vegas. And um, they were just talking about uh, how they, when they were done with it, they had basically three extra minutes on the episode and they have to trim that. They have to get that. And I think that there is a science to that. You can say this is a 10,000 word per week project and Unicorn Western has always been handled like that. It's a very specific word count. And so we can actually design a production schedule and know exactly what days things are going to be done and when they can rotate. And if you have that kind of infrastructure in place, you can do, you can move mountains. You really, really can. And, and I believe that. And so part of the projects that we're putting together, just like we put Unicorn Western together, kind of funnel first, knowing that there would be nine books. A lot of the projects that we're putting together are about um, speed and formula and trying to get as much art as we can within the fence. Because I don't think that building a fence around yourself limits your art. I actually think that it, it, it houses it in a place that allows it to prosper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So let me, the, the thought that I was going to say, and it dovetails right into what you just said, was that uh, we, it's important, what you get out of this is that it's important to think of yourselves as publishers and not just as writers if you want to be successful. If you just want to be an artist and create your art, that's great. But if you want people to buy it, you do have to have that extra step of thinking strategically thinking of what follows what. So for instance, the permanent free on the first book in our funnel makes sense. More exposure, people who like it will buy up. But to what Sean said, because I can see both sides of this because it has occurred to me, I get, uh, with Unicorn Western, I write the first draft. 
and we know that that's a 25,000 word project and Sean hands me beats and I have found myself many times checking word count against how far I am into the outline. So if we do a 12 chapter outline, then I know that I need to be at around 12.5 when I finish chapter 6. And so it occurs to me, I'm like, well, am I, you know, am I betraying the art by shoehorning the story into this artificial construct, seemingly artificial? And it's exactly like Sean said. It's more like a creative challenge and you're defining the, uh, the thing in, ahead of time. So if somebody said, create a visage of some person, you could do a sculpture, you could do a painting or whatever, but if somebody said do a charcoal drawing, that's essentially the same thing. You're just defining the parameters of the project. So just like we said, can you take a, a western and put a unicorn in it and somehow make that a good story? That's our assignment. We, that's what we have to work with. That's the world. Yeah, and these are all little projects like that that we're going right. to do. That that it's it's really about you know because for me the deadline is part of the art at least with this. Now the scope it, is a twenty five thousand yeah, word thing. Th this is not universal. Like Dave and I have have talked uh, many times about writing a book. Um, you know, we there's there's many books we would love to write together, um, and I think that How, is a don't you write a t shit ton of books like. You mean a like, standalone novel? Yeah, I mean a standalone novel. I like, and I, I think it was that's, like me saying that I think I'm going to breathe today. No, that's a different thing. Like, and and I think that we, I think sometimes at the Inkwell we confuse our projects and we treat serials like novels, and they're not. They're a little bit different. And uh, and I think that that a novel should have space to breathe. It should have t a lot more time. But I think that what we're doing is is essentially TV in in this different medium. And a, a book would be more like a, a, a film. And a, a film has a very different, con even though a film could be 120 minutes and a television pilot could be 120 minutes, they're very different, they're very different pieces of art. Um, they're supposed to do different things, they have different heavy lifting. And so I'm, I'm very, at this point, um, just really driven and really curious to kind of explore some of these, um, th these formulas and these parameters because I think it makes for um, really energetic, exciting on the creative level, and then on the mathematical level that helps me figure out how all this shit is working and how I can sell books no matter what I'm creating. Um, I think and is, is it informs the magic. art too. Like Sean has it, given me projects, many projects recently with specific word counts, and I'm doing that constantly, and it changes the structure of the book. If I have a little more room, I spread out. If I have less room, then I don't spread out and I compress. Yeah. And it I don't know how to describe this other than to say just trust me on it is it makes the work better. It does and 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 the speed again isn't an impediment at all. Um some of the things that Dave likes that I've written that he likes most are things that I wrote really really fast. Things that he likes that I he doesn't like as much are things that I struggled with a little bit. And the same is true for his copy. There's things that he's turned over to me and he's like, fuck this, I hate this bullshit. <laughs> and I'm like, this is That's really everything, like everything? Say, isn't it? Yeah. This is like really good. And then there's there's stuff that he really labored on for a long, long time that 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 takes more time on my end. You just didn't see the genius of it. <laughs> and so I think that um it's just I like playgrounds. That's all. And 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 the Unicorn Western I no, dude, go Dave's going to make a joke there. I'm sorry. You were just no, about no. to step on Dave's I like playgrounds thing. Go ahead, Go, go ahead. <laughs> no, actually, I was going to say, I think Austin Kleon had said something about um, limitations actually making your art better. I 100% I agree with that. And I've learned a lot. Unicorn Western has taught me a lot, actually, um, because... Um, because I loved all the restrictions, I loved the speed, I loved how playful it was, and I loved that it, it, it's just, you know what I think it all comes down to? I'm really, really interested in getting better. I'm really interested in improving as an artist um, and as a businessman. Like those, those two things are equally important to me. I want to be a better artist every day and I want to be a smarter, um, I want to be smarter on the business side too because I want to change the world and I can't do that by by you know staying in in place treading Who water do you think you it? are michael jackson <laughs> i i can give another example <laughs> what i can give another example <laughs> i can give another example of uh restrictions helping me out anyway is i was telling these guys i got um just this little timer like target timer it costs 10 bucks it's a kitchen timer and i am i've said that i write 7500 words a day and i've been trying to stick to that word count but the the 
even though I write fast, that has been dilating. So I just continue to tweak and refine, and what I've decided works best for me, because I went back and forth. Okay, an hour and a half period, I can stay fresh, but then first thing in the morning is my best time, but then after two weeks of getting up at 5 a.m., like, well, that's too fucking much, because <laughs> it's not sustainable, because I go to bed at 11. And so um, I eventually settled on, and I think I'm liking this so far, is a three-hour period from 6 to 9 in the morning every day, every weekday, so five of those, and then five hour-and-a-half blocks scattered throughout. And so for, and this is all behavioral know-thyself sort of thing. So, for instance, I used to have one Friday after the podcast. I can't do that anymore. It's just at 3 yeah, p.m. on right. Friday, I'm done. I can't, I can't write then. <laughs> So I moved that. But anyway, I then have essentially four and a half hours a day. And during that three-hour block, I am watching this timer out of the corner of my eye and trying to beat 5,000 words. And when I write the hour and a half block, I'm trying to beat 2,500 words, and I'm keeping a list of them. And sure enough, I'm, <laughs> I'm writing that fast, and I'm hitting those targets and producing really good stuff. So it's this optimizing of time in versus time a day versus whatever and what's going to happen here is that I'm able to spend four and a half hours when I'm at my best uh, just like optimally creating content and it's just getting better and better what I'm writing in my opinion just keeps getting I mean Sean's seeing most of it I hope yeah it's no I, I totally agree and, and and that's exactly where I am is just trying to constantly sand down the formula and get it a little bit better because I also have you know I'm, I'm working with different writers and I really like, I love, love writing, but I also really like production. I like producing. I like, um, I, I like the whole J.J. Abrams model, you know, making up worlds and kind of overseeing the worlds, but not writing every word. Um, I like that too. Which is, and, which is good for me because I'd rather just do the blast out the first draft. R right. I mean, our, our balance is, is, is fantastic because I think that we're both doing 100% of what we want to do. And um, it sounds like that's true. You and Dave, though, too. Dave, you just want to write, right? Well, no, because uh, because because Dave and I like the way we're doing. Oh no, go ahead, Dave. I don't mean to cut you off. Oh, go ahead. You answer for me. No, 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 <laughs> no. Go, please. <laughs> I like creating and writing. Um, it, it really depends. Uh, I don't know. The the, the 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 creating part can be uh, difficult. Managing all the pieces, and that that's part I struggle with but it's also the most rewarding part when it works out well but you don't you don't want to do like the, the the calls to action and the production is what I'm saying you want to do just creating yeah but but it's also um, we, we what, what there's less division in what Dave and I does like with our stuff Johnny there's your job and my job and they're very different with with me and Dave there's a lot of overlap so there's overlap in, in making up the story. There's overlap in, in the writing. Um, Dave does more of the writing than I do. So, for example, White Space is what we're on now. And, um, and, and um, they're 14,000-word um, episodes. And they're all at least 14,000 words. And I've written at least 5,000 words um, on each one. But then I also go through, um, you know, line by line on it. But on the creative end, it's the story's a lot more involved than anything we have going on in Unicorn Western, which, you know, I mean, Unicorn Western is... But I of, like that because I think that a lot of the looseness that you've given me in the beats, it doesn't have the intricate nature of like a thriller and interlocking elements, but I find that if I just have those beats, I discover other parts of the story. I totally, totally agree, but but Dave likes complicated. He does. <laughs> I know, I... It's it, it's I I want okay when I was reading Unicorn Western the first one I was like fuck I really want to do something loose and free and fun but every time I actually sit down to create something he does yeah we it tried, becomes a complicated yeah. monster of all be, white space is so insanely complicated it really it's going is. back generations <laughs> yeah. it's not different. we have family trees uh, for this shit <laughs> it was a goddamn nightmare to plot out. <laughs> but 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 yes, that is that is. But I love the story, so and and I do too. White Space probably at this point is creatively, I think, my favorite project I've ever done, and um and and that's saying a lot. So um so it just it depends. Now, would I love to get more streamlined with Dave? Yes, absolutely. And we keep no. trying. No. And, 
and and I think that we have some good ideas going forward for for Nevermore. And I you know, I actually found myself the other day wanting to do, and this is going to tickle Johnny, wanting to do Fat Vampire. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm I'm three I'm four books into that series, Dave. I, you missed the boat. Well, a different version. Oh, okay. Oh. Yeah, you should. You could call it. You could, could like uh, Stephen King's The Shining versus Stanley Kubrick's. You could call it David Wright's Fat <laughs> Vampire. Oh, that the was true. Awesome. <laughs> well, you could do it. Like you could wall. you could do one of those informed by true events or ripped from the headlines. It, no, and I could, I could do like videos on YouTube saying who who are you going to trust to write a fat vampire story? <laughs> Johnny be fucking truant, who's like ninety pounds, or a real fat man? <laughs> I'm 175. Hey, hey, Johnny! Actually, um, you should open up Fat Vampire like, uh, like um, Hugh Howie did for Wool. Just open up the world. And yeah. Let everybody write it. And then, well, no, just you. <laughs> <laughs> so it has been um, a significant chunk of time here. We should probably be done, but uh, I think next week we have a really nuts and bolts episode for those of you who want to get into the the nitty gritty um, with our our guest. Is it's, it's Jay. Thorn, I believe, is his name. I haven't. Oh, have this is with the uh, the formatting. D I think Dave didn't. You did most of the back and forth on that. That's his. Uh, yeah, I yeah, yeah book formatting and other stuff. Nuts, nuts and bolts sort of stuff. Yeah. And then after that, I would vote that we do a uh, something creative. A more creative one. But I, I'm dying to talk to C.J. Lyons again because I went back and listened to that, and she, g surprise, surprise, the person who sold a hundred thousand books a month last year, is agrees with like I went back to listen because I was like the, the shit that I'm talking about doing agrees that we all are agrees with what she she wasn't talking about gaming select no she mentioned it as a PS yeah no I to totally agree we should have CJ on um, have Lexi back on we, we definitely should have Lexi especially if and I, and I am seriously considering that because it makes sense but um, I get in on that shit you need extra help <laughs> so Dave's Garrett like I more. think yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> All right, so, All right, so we're done. Yeah, so we'll be done. So uh, everybody, uh, I don't know what to say at this point because, like, we got the you know you, you know about voicemails, you know about reviews. Our reviews are um, we're starting to get that dichotomy a little bit in the reviews. Very very little, but we're starting to get a little bit of hate, which is awesome. So oh, still oh five you stars. didn't read that. There really there aren't many, but they, they are out there. So oh, come on, hate that. is my lifeblood. Means we're making a uh, a difference. Stop the show. I mean, continue the show. Pause. <laughs> no way. I'm cutting Dave off. I want to see the hate. <laughs> there he is. He's trying to talk. All right, everybody. So uh, we'll catch you on the next. Uh, what is this self-publishing podcast? Notice that I Whatever. said never often dead once in the past. Bye -bye. <laughs>